Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 10 for February the 2nd, 2020. We begin a new unit today, Unit 3, entitled Jesus Teaches About True Worship. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is entitled Passing the Test. Our devotion reading is taken from Psalm uh, 91. Our background scripture is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 11. And that is also our print passage today uh, that we will be studying from the fourth chapter of Matthew verses 1 through 11. Our key verse reads, Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. That is taken from Matthew uh, chapter 4 verse 10. That's from the uh, NIV translation. We have um, three uh, lesson aims today. Uh, the first one uh, is to in explore the story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. Secondly, to aspire to reflect the same single-minded obedience to God that Jesus demonstrated. And then thirdly, to develop spiritual habits that can strengthen you uh, in times of temptation. We have uh, three outlines that are part of our lesson uh, outline today. The first um, outline is entitled Regarding His Provision. Second outline is entitled Regarding His Protection. And then the third outline is entitled Regarding His Preeminence. And so I do thank and praise God for uh, being able to be with you again through this Sunday School lesson. And uh, we encourage you always to um, uh, follow along with us with your Bible and be prepared for uh, note taking and scripture reference uh, that we might be uh, better able to understand what the Word of God is, is, is conveying to us. And we have a very uh, beautiful lesson today about tests, uh, passing them, and it's, it's something that uh, I think all of us need to be mindful of as believers, people of God, that uh, God will allow tests to take place in your life. And I should note that um, um, I'm not by any means uh, trying to um, uh, direct you in a particular way in terms of what you may be going through. But it's incumbent upon all of us as people of God, as believers, to uh, be in tune with the Holy Spirit, to walk in step with the Holy Spirit. And certainly by all means, if we don't uh, have answers to uh, particular things that are transpiring in our lives, then we need to go in prayer about that. But we will take a look at Jesus' life. Um, I noted here in the... Um, uh, biblical context that uh, our lesson standard uh, offers to us. We are dealing with uh, the time of preparation uh, for Jesus' ministry uh, was almost over, but not quite. And so uh, I wanted to read a little bit of the biblical context that's offered in our lesson uh, quarterly, and then I want to just share some uh, basic points about the uh, gospel according to Matthew but as we deal with Jesus uh, testing if you will in the wilderness uh, there are three temptations or tests in our lesson uh, these are opportunities for Jesus to assert his messianic role in the world uh, the tests go to the core of Jesus identity and mission and then also his individual temptations also carry systemic and global ramifications. So um, Jesus experienced what has come to be known as three tests. And I'll, I'll give it to you this way that they are the priorities test. That's number one. Uh, the second test is the confidence test. And then the third test is the allegiance test. And we'll say a little bit more about that um, uh, in a spiritual way because this same uh, um, rendering, if you will, from Matthew chapter 4 is also offered 
in the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 4. But some things about Matthew that we should know. Uh, like all the Gospels, Matthew's purpose is to convey authoritative teaching uh, by and about Jesus, whose coming marks the fulfillment of God's promises and the presence of God's kingdom. So Matthew makes no division between history and theology. Uh, his history, Matthew's history, is the basis of the theology, and the theology gives its proper meaning uh, to the history. It's interesting that we just came out of very comprehensive study, uh, uh, Sunday school lessons uh, involving history, uh, particularly in the uh, book of First Kings, uh, chapter 8. Uh, and so history is relevant in Matthew, this being a Jewish gospel, he understood it. He understood the historical account, Israel's historical account, uh, as it was uh, uh, given to us in the Old Testament. And, and, and Matthew, uh, masterfully, with the help of the Holy Spirit, took that history because he was able to understand uh, uh, God's program for Israel's life, or their, their mission, if you will, uh, in the world. So Matthew makes extensive use of fulfillment references to the Old Testament. So his citations are not uh, uh, presented as isolated predictions and fulfillments, but as proof of the fulfillment of all the expectations of the Old Testament. I thought that's very helpful for us to understand uh, 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 how to use the Word of God. Second uh, Timothy, I believe, chapter 3 tells us that all Scripture is God-breathed and it's useful. Uh, we can teach, we can correct, we can train, we can rebuke, we can do a lot of things if we understand uh, uh, the proper context. Uh, but as we deal with this, this uh, lesson outlined today and the activity of Satan, I will just make one final remark before we get into these outlines. There are two things that we really need to know as believers. Uh, we need to know the works of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that will be relevant as we get into this lesson today. And we also need to know the works of the devil. Uh, we need to be aware of the type of things that he is capable of and his attempts to use scripture uh, but always out of context, never in context, uh, always trying to uh, uh, assert uh, his authority over God's authority. We need to understand how this uh, uh, plays out, if you will. Uh, in terms of tests because these are the things that we have to go through uh, and these are the things that are uh, deciding factors if you will of our being moved to the next level if you will or our growth in in, uh, uh, in Christian understanding and so this is something that we will see uh, but I want to get into this first outline it's entitled uh, regarding his provision uh, and this is taken from Matthew chapter 4 uh, verses 1 through 4 and I want to read this from the NIV translation the Bible says then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil after fasting 40 days and 40 nights he was hungry verse 3 the tempter came to him and said if you are the Son of God tell these stones to become bread and then verse 4, Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from uh, the mouth of God. And so, um, it should also uh, be understood as we uh, deal with this lesson today that Jesus uh, uses quotations from the book of Deuteronomy uh, as he engages uh, uh, the sixth chapter, uh, verse 16, I'm sorry, the sixth chapter, verse 13, uh, and then verse 16, and then uh, the eighth chapter, verse 3, uh, and then will also uh, be some reference to Psalm 91, verses uh, uh, 11 and 12. So these provide a rich context for Jesus and Satan's uh, conversation. So it's important to understand or to remember uh, that uh, uh, we have to be able to identify 
uh, what's happening and who who we are listening to. Uh, I, I've always heard this, and I'm sure that you have, and I, I hear this in the church a lot. Uh, believers saying something told me. Uh, well, who would this individual be? Who would this mysterious individual be that you don't recognize that you cannot put a name on? So there's some uh, uh, individuals in this first outline that we want to be able to identify by name. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, Jesus is there. We, we get that from verse 1. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit, the uh, third member of the Trinity, Trinity into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So we have Jesus, we have uh, the Spirit of God, and we have the devil. And so all of these uh, particular uh, individuals, if you will, are speaking differently or doing things differently. But it's clear who's doing what. And it should be also noted that when we see this, that uh, the Spirit uh, led uh, Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. Uh, James chapter 1 helps us to understand that God does not tempt anyone. Uh, but what God will do, he will allow things to occur. Uh, he will allow things to transpire. He will allow you and I to go through things that are part of his will. So this is specific here prior to Jesus ministry as Luke would have us to understand and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute but it was for a specific purpose and so uh, uh, it's something to understand when when we encounter the devil uh, we may be uh, uh, undergoing some tests we may be go undergoing some training uh, some exposure if you will to be able to understand how uh, the devil works how the Holy Spirit works and so we don't hear anything else from the Spirit saying anything we hear Jesus answering Satan but the role of the Holy Spirit is there it is guiding Jesus in this hour of testing here and so but as the text starts off with then implying something happened prior to this verse uh, that impacts our current reading so Jesus had just been baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist you can see that in, in Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 through 17 so he was then led by the spirit into the wilderness for the purpose for the purpose of being tempted you and I go through these tests every day uh, and what I mean by that we are tempted by various things we are tempted to get involved in various things uh, and and so uh, though God, God doesn't tempt us to 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 do anything to sin if you will uh, but we understand where these temptations come from uh, but I again I would urge you to read James chapter 1 where it talks about the process of this temptations how we are carried away but what I love about this text Jesus uh, begins to deal with Satan from the Word of God uh, he we, we see here in the text that he is hungry uh, and, and this is the time that uh, 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 I would like to say at least from Luke's standpoint that Jesus is being attacked in the body or concerning the body if you will uh, but make no mistake, the whole body is being tested, is going to be tested. There are some things that Satan wants to do. And so uh, uh, he's attempting now, confronting Jesus, how to address his hunger. Uh, and this is the type of activity that Satan will present to us when we are in need of various things. Satan will tempt us to supplement uh, 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 what the Word of God says for some other activity uh, but here in verse 3 the tempter came to him and said if you are the son of, son of God tell these stones to become bread Jesus answered it is written then he goes on to say man shall not live on bread alone I just want to 
pause uh, right here to help us to understand when we're dealing with the enemy, we need the word of God. This is the critical aspect. Uh, and, and, and what I mean by that is that we need to not just quote scripture, but we need to be able to use it in context and, and be able to defend ourselves, if you will, uh, from the activity of Satan. If you were hearing voices, if someone or something was telling you to do a particular thing, how would you determine if it was the word of God or the spirit of God or the devil? How would you discern if you should do this thing or not? Or would you just uh, uh, go with it without uh, bringing it into subjection to the word of God? Or do we know enough of the word of God to, to combat these things or to entertain these things or to uh, dialogue in this manner about the things that we are tempted to do? Uh, 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 one of the things that is relevant to the Spirit of God is that he is always holy. He is always set apart. He is always sanctified. He is always truthful. So these things we have to be able to temper with what we're hearing versus the things that the enemy might say or the devil might say that we know he's an adversary. We know that he is not holy. He is not set apart. He is not sanctified. He is not truthful. And so he speaks his native language, which is a lie. And so uh, we have to be able to know if what we're hearing is truth. What do we use to gauge what we're hearing? So uh, 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 Jesus said these words in John chapter 14. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we need to be able to compare and contrast the things that we're hearing uh, with the word of God versus those things that the enemy uh, would have us uh, to understand or to confuse us. And, and I would like to make one final point here about this uh, particular uh, activity of Satan. And we, you would get this from Genesis chapter 3. Uh, the Bible says this concerning uh, Satan that he's uh, more crafty than any other created thing. Uh, so he is able to uh, malign, twist, and, 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 and exchange the truth for a lie. He is able to deceive uh, 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 in a way or at a level that we cannot comprehend. What I mean by that is just by the time that you could bat your eye, you would have been deceived. By the time that God gave instructions to Adam and Eve in, in, in Genesis chapter 3, Satan was there. He came right there uh, to question or to confuse the things uh, that, that, that uh, God had already given that they should do. So we have to be able to respond to the things that we hear uh, in the natural and things that we hear in the spirit. And so I want to uh, want to make that clear, but we gave you uh, the uh, reference scripture here. But but this forty, uh, I just want to stick a pin in this. The number forty generally symbolizes a period of fasting. I'm sorry, a period of testing, trials, probation, and preparation. So after spending forty years in Egypt uh, and forty years. In the desert, Moses would spend 40 days on the mountain with God on two separate occasions. You can see that in Exodus uh, chapter 24, verse 18, and Exodus chapter uh, 34, verses 1 uh, uh, through 28. So uh, prior to living out the last 40 years of his life uh, leading uh, the children of Israel, this would, this would be Moses. So this this... A period of fasting, this period of uh, being in a in a desperate situation, if you will, and sometimes uh, our desperation or, or our desperate matters or issues uh, reveal to us if we have the patience to wait for God, or will we overstep the Word of God? What if Jesus had followed the instructions of Satan? And did these things that, that Satan is directing him to do. But Jesus, though he did not do it, he remained in the position that he was in 
and still quoted scripture using it in the context that man shall not live uh, uh, on bread alone but on every word I think that is something for us to take a look at uh, if we are able to speak the word of God in a desperate situation are we able to use the word of God as our uh, uh, nourishment if you will or our nutrients or our sustenance if, uh, though we don't have what we would really need we are relying on the word of God and this is what Jesus is essentially saying to Satan is that uh, uh, I'm not just uh, living on uh, uh, physical food I'm living on spiritual food so there's there's something that we need to take a look at but I think uh, we all have been challenged to supplement what God has said versus what we were instructed to do. Keep that in mind. The question here is share a time when you were tempted to seek provision from another source other than God. What happened and what did you learn? You will see this theme uh, what did you learn repeated in a couple of other questions we have in this lesson today uh, but we all have been there and we've all done that and sometimes uh, we didn't learn anything from the test and I would just say this to you today if you cannot and uh, uh, if the test has not been lifted if I can say it to you that way then perhaps you need to grab some pen and paper and see what you're learning what does God want to teach you what does he want to teach me and I, I can tell you from personal experience I've gone through some very difficult things that uh, God allowed to happen uh, and he didn't lift it uh, when I thought that he should have or when I prayed about it. But what did I do about that? Uh, did I learn anything from it? And so this is the whole purpose here. And keep in mind in Jesus' life at this time here, he's not quite ready yet or he is not uh, quite past the test, if you will. He has not gone through uh, the things that God would have him to go through. Uh, and so these events take place and it should also be noted is the reason why Jesus has to go through this way is because in order for him to be able to identify with humanity he has to be exposed to everything that we might be exposed to we'll give you some scripture to support that as we go along but the second outline is entitled regarding his protection it's taken from Matthew chapter 4 verses 5 through 7 and again um, from the NIV translation the Bible says then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple and verse 6 if you are the son of God he said throw yourself down for it is written he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Here the devil is quoting scripture. He is quoting scripture from Psalm 91. Verse 7, Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. The devil is not through. Um, he's not finished, if you will. Um, one of the things that the devil will do, one of the workings of the devil that we should understand as believers is time. He uses time. Um, he takes time. Uh, your testing or your temptation uh, may subside, but then the devil is relentless enough to come back. Uh, and so here we get a second uh activity if you will um, of, of Satan as uh, Luke would have us to understand uh, that now Jesus soul is in question what would happen to Jesus if he throws himself down um, we have a lot of things that happen to to us and one of the things that I found that that I attribute to the devil of is his attempt to suggest and resuggest, his attempts to 
okay it didn't work but I'm gonna come back uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try this thing again I'm gonna see if I can get you to escalate in following the things that I would have you to do we need to pay attention to that because uh, these are things that we have to learn how to respond and and we might note here Jesus is still using the Word of God to defend himself this is where Sunday school comes in handy this is where Bible study comes in handy this is why you need personal reading time you need personal study time uh, because we do need to study uh, for head knowledge but we also need to study for heart knowledge because these are the things that the devil will continue to try to twist us uh, and confuse us about what the Word of God says and if he's doing this to Jesus you know you and I uh, don't have a, a path of escape we're going to go through these things but giving little regard to and no response to the word Jesus spoke to Satan in verse 4 the devil then takes Jesus to the holy city and sets him on a, on the pinnacle the highest point of the temple again Satan issued a challenge to Jesus integrity by tempting Jesus to jump from this high point since scripture uh, said God will protect his own uh, by commanding the angels to ensure their safety in our culture we have uh, a lot of suicide uh, uh, issues we have a lot of things that have happened to uh, people that we know who have taken their own lives and I just want you to understand that this is the activity uh, many times that Satan will use to give us the sense of hopelessness in the world I asked the question earlier what would have happened to Jesus if he had thrown himself down what is Satan really saying to you uh, or saying to Christ here test God and see if he'll save you by throwing if you throw yourself down from this high point God should save you because that's what he said right but Jesus says it is also written you see that he comes back again quoting uh, scripture to the devil to give him to understand that do not put the Lord your God to the test again temptations come to um, twist us or to bend us into supplementing what the Lord said versus what we would like to do or what the enemy is telling us to do so it should be understood that uh, Satan was using the word uh, Satan what he quoted was accurate but it is not a full quote he quoted half of Psalm 91 verse 11 and Psalm 91 verse 12 this again speaks to the craftiness of Satan as the father of lies speaking half truths uh, this comes naturally to Satan as he seeks to deceive the people of God so many have fallen short due to Satan's deceptive tactics and they're not having a full grasp of God's word I was thinking about John chapter 10 I believe and Jesus said these words he said I have come that you might have life have it more abundantly have a full life have a productive life have a, a measured life that's full of substance so why is Satan, Satan saying to Christ essentially to test God and see if you'll survive the fall by throwing yourself down life Jesus says again in John chapter 14 I am the way the truth and the life why would Christ need to die on the cross that we should die that doesn't make sense 
why would Christ need to give his life and I mean we have to look at the cross because it's the best evidence that we have that God he loved us John 3 said he so loved us that he gave his only begotten son for you to die no that you might live but Satan doesn't want you to know that he doesn't want me to know that so he gives us these suggestions to tempt God and to throw yourself down off the highest point right the highest point of the temple he takes Christ up here and tells him to do this commit this act put God to the test if you are who you say you are then this should apply to you and sometimes when we're going through tests one of the tricks of the enemy is to nullify the fact that we are children of God it doesn't minimize the test that you're going through but it doesn't nullify the fact that you are still a child of God even though God is allowing you to go through some things Jesus is still the son of God he will always be the son of God but the father is allowing him to go through some things keep in mind Matthew is using what the Old Testament has said about Christ you should read Isaiah 53 and when you get to verse 10 it'll say something like this that it pleased the father to crush him him being this son and put him to grief it pleased the father right so this is something that we don't always understand the will of God we don't understand how long the tests are going to last and I should also say this to you as we talk about uh, uh, temptations and, 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 and tests and things like that everything uh, is not of God all right so we need to understand there are things that we bring on ourselves that God had nothing to do with and then there are times when God allows things to happen right to test us the books of first and second Peter are excellent books to study about different types of suffering I encourage you to read that at your leisure so you can understand uh, how these things take place sometimes that sometimes are attributed to us right we'll also see that in James chapter 1 alright but again the question is asked share a time when you were tempted to seek protection or retaliation by your own might and resources and again what happened and what did you learn so we we need to look at the things that we are doing we need to look at the things that we are saying and and sometimes we pay a hefty cost for not obeying God I am so glad in this text that Jesus stood his ground that Jesus faced hunger right and he held his ground using the Word of God the second outline he is maintaining his integrity if you will he's being attacked at for his very soul to throw himself down he stands his ground he uses the Word of God right he understands how to use God's Word right and we have to begin and learn how to respond to Satan with God's Word it is the power it is that two-edged sword that uh, Hebrews chapter 4 tells us about all right so the third outline is entitled regarding his preeminence this is taken from Matthew chapter 4 verses 8 uh, through 11 and again from the NIV translation again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor all this I will give you he said if you will bow down and worship me verse 10 Jesus said to him away from me Satan for it is written worship the Lord your God and serve him only verse 11 then the devil left him and angels came and attended him when you look at this same outline if you will 
uh, from Luke chapter 4. Luke gives us some additional information about the activity of Satan. Uh, but one of the things that, that struck out stuck out to me as I looked at Luke's account, particularly as we deal with verse 11, right? So we have to understand that our testing time varies, right? But the accuser, Satan, only left temporarily, right? Satan's temptation in this life is not continuous, but it is unrelenting or constant. He continues to try to make uh, inroads uh, into our lives. But Luke chapter 4 verse 13 after this third temptation the Bible says now when the devil had ended every temptation he departed from him Christ until an opportune time. So this is kind of the activity if you will of Satan. His third test uh, involves Jesus spirit all right his mind or his body his soul his spirit has undergone these these tests and in verse 11 the angels came and attended him why did they do that why they, did the angels come and minister to Christ because when we go through temptations we need strength we need to be strengthened we need uh, to be restored if you will we need to be rejuvenated we need to be quickened and these angels I believe they came to quicken him keep in mind this has been going on for some time in this wilderness in this desperate situation in his humanity he would have needed to be strengthened he would have needed to be Christ uh, 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 quickened if you will he would have needed to be uh, 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 encouraged if you will he would have needed to be attended to in a way uh, that that brings him uh, some type of, of of restoration if you will for what he has gone through in his spirit in his flesh and so we can expect God to minister to us I don't know about you when I when I go through things uh, my vitality is drained uh, my mind is weary uh, 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 you know and so we need God's steady hand uh, to to quicken us and to uh, revitalize us and so we'll be able to to go on uh, in ministry all of these things happened to Jesus prior to his ministry we need strength to minister to God's people we need uh, 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 God's power right we need his power to quicken us when we've gone through things right so the angels came right so in continuation of the temptations that the devil proposed to Jesus, uh, Satan again took him somewhere, took him up on this mountain. Satan guided Jesus to a position where he had an advantage to fully see the world's kingdoms in all their splendor. So Satan offered Jesus all the splendor and glory the world has to offer in these powerful and wonderful kingdoms if he would bow down and worship him. We have to talk about being content with what God has given to us. This is one of the tricks of the enemy if you will to get us to supplement what God has given to us for more. And how many times do we see us get in trouble when we overstep 
and we do things that we have no business doing and then we we get in trouble for those things and sometimes it's years if we ever recover uh, but Jesus is again standing his ground Jesus is again rebuking Satan all right this is an aspect of the Word of God right he is censuring Satan he's rebuking him right away from me Satan for it is written worship the Lord your God and serve him only right so the devil concluded this is not going to be a good day for me right I'm not going to be able to twist him I'm not going to be able to uh, get him to bow down and do the things and we have to learn if we stand our ground uh, James says if we resist the devil he will flee but right we have to understand it's just for a more opportune time when Satan comes back and see if we're at our weakness again if we're at a low point again and so this is it's very important that we have in our circle people who can encourage us in the Word of God I thank God that through this whole ordeal the Holy Spirit was there and we have to remember that as believers the Holy Spirit is always there he is always available he is our uh, helper he is our standby he is our go-between he is our intercessor and we have to simply use him right he is our ally he is there to help us to quicken us right the same Holy Spirit that was with Christ is with us and sometimes we don't use our ally right we don't use our spiritual friend we don't use our spiritual uh, uh, resources right but Ephesians chapter 6 tells us to put on the whole armor of God right that you might be able to stay right and, and after you've done everything or done all then we should stand right so the Bible teaches us to resist get away from and even flee the devil James chapter 4 verses 7 and then also uh, 2nd Timothy chapter 2 uh, verse 22 so uh, the Bible notes that the success of resistance to this temptation and the bold response Satan did uh, uh, did just as commanded he left I'll finish this way as a believer you have authority right we have authority in Christ that's why we pray in the name of that's why we can rebuke in the name of we have the authority to rebuke the enemy right to censure him to reprimand him you are not the devil's footstool right we have been bought with a price right if you read Romans chapter 6 it will tell you that sin shall not be your master right we have the authority given to us you are an anointed individual God anointed you with power right to rebuke to you don't have to let the devil run roughshod over you right you don't have to do that because you are a child of the Most High right you are a representative of Jesus Christ so call on that authority call on that power call on that name that is above every name and you will find yourself receiving what God said that you have in Ephesians chapter 1 I would encourage you to read uh, that entire chapter because this is the one that I love to give to believers because it specifically says to the saints at Ephesus of what God has given us what we possess right now as believers as children of God so I hope trust and pray that this lesson has been a blessing for you I hope that you will reread it uh, these various accounts that are offered in Matthew uh, Mark the Gospel of Mark doesn't give us a lot of detail we get more uh, in Matthew and Luke concerning what Jesus went through but it is possible for you to stand your ground
no matter what the devil is trying to do no matter what he is throwing your way your way no matter who he is trying to use to get you out of place and out of step with the word of God and out of fellowship with the word of God we have that authority you can stand your ground our closing prayer dear Lord we come to you with humbled hearts seeking clarity and conviction teach us to with more focus and attention seek to read your word more memorize your word more and apply your word in Jesus name we pray amen so again until the Lord will permit us to come together again we say God bless you